In Creo Parametric, you can use the draft feature in order to add taper to the sides of a model in order to facilitate releasing it from a mold. And when I was thinking of doing this video, I was trying to figure out what would be a fun model to use, and I decided, why don't I try to make something like the mouse droid from Star Wars? So let's take a look at using the draft feature to get that, those unique taper angles that they have on this little droid. I created an assembly with two different components, and if I were in Creo Parametric 7.0, I would actually use multi-body modeling for doing this. But as I record this video, we're about a month away from its release. So I created an assembly with two components, the top and the bottom. Let's start off by applying draft to the top of the mouse droid. I will click on a surface and then use the open icon in order to bring it up in its own separate window. And so here I have the mouse droid over here. And let me go to my default orientation. I'm trying to remember which direction is the front. So let me go here. All right, so I'm guessing that this is the big angled surface that I want. To start off the draft feature, you can either click on the command in the ribbon on the model tab, or you can select the surface that you want to draft. And to create the draft now, I can use this particular command. And if you take a look at the ribbon, you can see that we have a number of different things that we have to define. The references tab is in red. Since I started off by selecting a surface, it is using that individual surface as the one to be drafted. But I need to define a draft hinge. And I want to measure the angle around this surface for the hinge. You'll notice that there's also a pull direction. So imagine if we were releasing this out of the mold, what would direction would we be pulling from? And right now it's using the same surface as the pull direction. In a later video, I'll show situations in which you might want to have a different pull direction than the draft hinge that you are using. And you can see that we have a drag handle and we can see that we can change the angle of the draft. And I wouldn't want to go this way for this particular model if I was creating this in a mold because I wouldn't be able to release it from the mold. So I'm going to drag it over here. If you are in Creo Parametric 3.0, excuse me, 2.0 and earlier, I believe it was, you are limited to plus or minus 30 degrees of draft. But you can see here, now that I'm using Creo Parametric 6.0, you can go to a maximum of 89 degrees, which is kind of crazy. If you're doing something just for releasing something from a mold, typically you might use small values like half a degree, one degree, two degrees, and so forth. But this part has this uh, part has a big angled surface on here. So I'm going to use a 30 degree draft on that surface. By the way, let's take a look at some of the other different options that we have on here. We have the settings to propagate along tangent surfaces. There are no tangent surfaces in this one. And there's another option here to disable round surfaces inlying. And inlying round surfaces will not be drafted is what that does. You have a split tab. In another video, I'll show how you could use a your draft hinge as a split for your angle or using a draft object like a plane or a surface. Also in another video, I'll show how you could have multiple draft angles on a given surface. And here we have the options where you could exclude certain loops. And here we're creating round and chamfer geometry. And lastly, the properties tab is where you can rename the feature. But I'm happy with everything in here, so I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button, and my first surface will be drafted. For the other three surfaces, let's create our draft feature. I'll select this surface over here and rotate my model, and let's hold down the control key to select the other individual surfaces. For selecting my draft hinge, I can also hold down the right mouse button and activate the draft hinges collector, and then pick the surface that I want. And it's using the same surface as the pull direction, which is fine. And on these other three surfaces, we, we don't want that big 30 degrees of draft. These are actually going to be about 15 degrees of draft. And I just drag the handle to that value. You can also double click on the dimension in order to change it. And then hit the check mark. And 
again, if I was creating this in a mold, I probably would want to draft these four surfaces around over here. Sometimes having vertical surfaces can be an issue. Uh, if you think about trying to release an ice cube from a tray, if the walls of the ice cube tray were vertical, you would have some trouble getting the ice out of the tray. And so for selecting these four surfaces around here, I'm going to use a different method. This time I'm going to start off by clicking on the draft tool and to select the surfaces around that first surface, I can select this surface over here and then hold down the shift key and then pick an edge on that surface. And that is an advanced selection method called loop surfaces. If I go to the references tab over here, you'll notice that it says that this actually is loop surfaces. And if you have trouble creating features like draft using the shift key, or if you can't remember those different things, you can click on the details button and it'll bring up a dialog box that will help you construct those different kinds of features. So for example, here's loop surfaces. Let's say I went back over here and then picked another surface over here there oh right now it's using that as an included surface I uh, let me click the add button and now at this point I would be defining a set let me just pick a surface over here and now when I'm doing this one over here you could change to loop surfaces or the seed and boundary method or all solid surfaces but I don't want to draft any other additional surfaces let me hit the cancel button out of here and I've got those four surfaces selected and now for my draft hinge, let me hold down the right mouse button and activate my draft hinges collector and then pick this surface. If I want to, I could flip the pull direction. And for this one, I want to get just a little bit of draft over here. Just make sure it's going in the right direction. Sometimes I like to exaggerate and say, yep, that is the right way that it should be going if I'm going to do this in a mold. And again, I only need a little bit about amount of draft in this particular case. So one degree is good. Let's hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And that way we've got the draft in the first part in our droid. Let me hop back over to my assembly model and you can see the effects on there. Now let's take care of the bottom. I'll select it and then use the open icon from the mini toolbar. And once again, I want to apply draft to the surfaces around over here. So we can click on the draft tool and then I can use the control key for picking all four of these surfaces if I want, but I'm going to show you another option that you can use. Let me hold down the right mouse button and choose clear. That's a way of emptying the collector. Instead of selecting those four surfaces manually, I can use what are called the intent surfaces. If I hover my mouse over this surface and then tap the right mouse button, it'll go to the next surface under the mouse. And this time though, once I tap right again, we have the intent surfaces. So what it's doing is it's going to grab the surfaces associated with the feature called extrude two. And the beauty of using intent surfaces is that if you ever change the sketch that defines extrude two, then the surfaces that are created will automatically update. So for example, if I change this sketch from a rectangle to an oval, well, it would automatically change which surfaces are going to be drafted. Once again, let's use the right mouse button to activate the draft hinges collector. And I will pick this surface over here. And for the draft in this particular case, we want it going to the inside to get that angled shape. It's going to be 15 degrees. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And once again, I want to apply some draft to these surfaces just to make sure that I have a little bit of mount so that this can be released from the mold. So let's go to the draft command and I can tap the right mouse button and once again use the intent surfaces, the surfaces associated with this feature. And for the pull direction for releasing it from the mold, uh, let's use I'll right mouse click and activate the draft hinges collector. Let's use this surface over here. And again, just want to make sure I'm going in the right direction. 
yes, that direction over there. Let's use, again, just one degree of draft. And do I get have that in the right direction? Yes, I think so. All right, that's good. Let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button and hop back over to my assembly. Now you can see that we are getting that distinct shape of that cute little robot that Chewbacca growled at in Star Wars A New Hope. One other thing I just want to mention, uh, since I was making this a black part, I actually changed the color that edges are showing in. If you go to File, Options, and then System Appearance, you can expand Graphics, and here we have the color for shaded edges. If I use the default color, you'll notice that, hey, it really doesn't pop out there to see the edges for the part since this little droid is kind of black. Uh, so let you can use the drop down list and use maybe one of the other theme colors or even use more colors if you wanted to drag it all the way to a particular color. So for example, if I use values of 255 for red, green, and blue, and then click the OK button, then I'm using a white color for the edges, and that way you can see the distinction between the top and bottom parts of the droid. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.